MMT followers, Christina Fugis with Mole Making Technology, and this is another MMT chat for some of the lessons and opportunities from your fellow mold builders and pool builders across North America. Um, just in relation to the coronavirus or COVID-19 um, and how it's impacted the industry. And I want you to meet Bill Berry, the president and owner of Dye Tech and Engineering in Wyoming, Michigan. Um, his team delivered a die cast tool um, concept to completion, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, in less than one week, for a component that was holding up production for some very necessary ventilators, as we all know. Um, it was a um, collaborative effort between Twin Cities die casting and Venten, a supplier of ventilators, and some of your key, I'm sure, suppliers or vendors. So, why don't you talk a little bit about and take us through this project? Um, last Friday, um, um, a week ago, um, at 5.15 or thereabouts, we received a request for information asking us how quickly we could build a uh, two-cavity um, die for this component that goes in the Ventec ventilators. Um, you know, I saw the, uh, the email come in and I called my contact at Twin Cities right away and uh, you know very early in the conversation it became clear to me that they needed more than a two cavity die and they needed it very quickly so they were asking for four to five weeks delivery and we told them that we could in fact if we had to deliver a higher cavitation tool in in one week or less and uh, they immediately uh, authorized uh, authorized us to start proceeding with the design and Bill. Um, I held my engineering team over. I held some of my suppliers over. Um, we did a design review, a preliminary design review at nine o'clock that evening. And we received the beginning pieces of steel at 2 a.m. Um, from one of our key suppliers, uh, Bico Steel here in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. I held the right engineering guys over. My One of my lead engineers worked uh, for the most part an entire day straight. And uh, by Sunday morning at 5 a.m., all of the steel was in heat treat. Uh, by Monday morning at 5 a.m., we counted 11 five-axis machines, machining components. And uh, we shipped the die Wednesday at approximately uh, 2 p.m. Okay. So... That's how it went. But I have to ask this, going through this, were you surprised that you were able to pull this off or this was something that you just knew Ditech could handle this? That seems really fast. Oh, it's, in, it's incredibly fast. And, you know, um, technologically, I mean, I, I knew the equipment and the, the methods we've developed uh, were capable of uh, performing to this level, but you could never do it if you didn't have a, a closely coupled relationship with your suppliers yeah. and employees that were willing to do what they what, what was possible, not what you demanded of them or whatever, you know, because you, I wouldn't have asked them to work 23 hours straight. Exactly. But they did. So, and the general manager from Bico Steel delivered the steel uh, at 2 a.m. in his... Uh, in his Ford Explorer, the owner, one of the owners of Hanson Bulk uh, Steel Treating, met me at 5 a.m. on Sunday morning um, to load the furnaces with the steel. Um, all my guys showed up whenever they needed to, and and uh, you know, this is a this is probably as fast as using current available technology anybody in the world could build this just because we had all the parts we had all the people that knew what to do and we had relationships with our supply chain yeah but the fact that it had to all come together that quickly is just a testament to how manufacturers just get it done i mean right. just to come together like that is incredible so i understand the die for this but the, there's complexity there so you want to go over what you have there on the table and what i'm seeing on the screen behind and talk a little bit about the part and the tool? Um, this is the this is actually the the result 
the Twin Cities, you know, sent back with one of my engineers. Um, it makes six parts that have to be trimmed out of this aluminum uh, gate. And so there are six individual parts. Um, with a tool like this, they can, they can cast and trim, um, you know, in the neighborhood of 600 parts an hour, which since there are three parts per ventilator, um, there's three parts per ventilator. Uh, that's enough for 200 ventilators per hour. So whatever the bottom, if this in fact, and I don't know that, but if I'm told that this in fact was one of the bottlenecks, you know, now they can make, if this is the bottleneck, if all the other parts fall into place, they, well, they can make 200 ventilators an hour, which, you know, that's whatever, 20 hours a day, that's 4,000 ventilators a day. So, um, uh, on the screen is the same, is an image of the part. I'll bring up an image of the tool. Okay. Um, you know, there's a, there's an image of the tool and, uh, you know, and there's, there's hundreds of parts in that, that all had to be manufactured from scratch from raw blocks of steel in five days. And, uh, One of the most, uh, one of the one of the features of the tool that you'll like most, I think, Christina. I'll, I'll, let me find it. There you go. I don't know if you can see that on your screen. I can't see it too clearly. It says uh, Ditech and Engineering, proudly made in the USA, Grand Rapids, that Michigan. Bam. Yes, <laughs> that's what so, we need. And so, that I mean, you sums it all up. Right. So. Right? So what was so, yeah. the tricky part about this tool? I mean, there's a lot of moving parts going on there. Uh, the, the 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 most difficult part is to have a a good relationship and a good conversation with the die caster so that we could um, we could work with them to get the design done in record time um, the tool itself is not is not uh, is something that we do every day um, but many times the dialogue about what the configuration should be how the metal is going to arrive in the part how it fits to the machine, um, all of these things, we were able to answer all of those questions in record time because of the relationship that we had with the supplier. I mean, typically, if you didn't have a closely coupled supply chain, if you went out for, for a, a request for quote on something like this by a number of different companies, okay. it would take weeks to sort out, well, how much did it cost? What should it look like? Which machine is it going to fit in? All of those questions were able to be answered in minutes um, during the first design review. You know, and right there, that those questions typically take much more time than it takes to build to build uh, than it took us to build this tool. Yeah, that's it's amazing. So, there, but there's a sense of urgency there too. So I'm sure all the whole chain, all those companies, it was priority to all of them, I oh, would yeah. imagine. So it's- Hottest, it's job, in the, hot, hottest job in the shop, you know, in, yeah. in, all of, in all of our companies. And, um, you know, I mean, I guess manufacturers do incredible things every day and nobody watches. Yeah. This was an opportunity that, you know, to work on a project that perhaps has the highest visibility of anything being made in the United States today. Right and we and we're, and we were fortunate enough to be uh, brought in to be part of that. So that was exactly. that was great. And that's why this is a story worth telling, because if we want to shed a spotlight or put the spotlight on manufacturing and its value, especially the tooling end of it, this is an ideal project for that. So it's worth it to push this out to show how innovative, responsive, collaborative, um, like I said earlier, you just get it done. So am I right that you're working on for this project? Are there other parts that you're currently working on? Uh, there's 
five or six machines machining parts for the next die, which will be a cylinder housing that these parts go in. Okay. So, um, you know, so the, I, the, the heat treaters are waiting for those parts to get there. My guys are on standby to work on them as they come off the machines. And uh, it's a more complicated part. It does more complicated die. It doesn't have as many moving pieces, but it's a nine cavity die that makes seven different parts. Okay. Or no, uh, five different parts, I think. Wow. So, so making multiple parts is more complex than just making six of the same, same part. part. Got it. Right. Got it. So what was key i know i connected with bico over there so what is that relationship like it seemed like there was a lot that they worked with you on so i think it's worth noting that your vendors your suppliers are key to this whole relationship too can you talk a little uh, bit about bico you know, typically typically i uh, you know you order a piece of steel it gets in line in the queue and you know they have to saw it and and whatever but and uh and grind it or whatever. So many of those individual operations um, don't take very much time, but in everybody's production uh, supply chain, you know, things move from one step to one step to one step to the next step. Um, they know what, how we want the steel prepared. They know what we're asking for. And they were willing to, once I explained to them what this was for, put it right in the front of the line, hold their team over to work through the night and uh, and get us steel in the middle of the night, actually. So relationships. 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 And I can't I can't say it, you know, I can't say enough. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I, I was um, I started my career out at General Motors, actually worked internationally for a while. Um, you know, uh, tooling manufacturing, you know, high volume production can't be done without tooling. And the fact that so much of our tooling supply base has been outsourced to, to foreign countries, um, you know, prevents this kind of response from happening uh, unless you have unless you have a strong tooling supply base. So absolutely, I think I think it's something that should be changed. I, I agree, absolutely. So what is? Give me one thing you learned about die tech through this experience. You know, I. I started, I, I was working overseas in 1984 for for uh, General Motors and I came back and started this company and, you know, these are the kinds of things we know we can do. You know, I mean, uh, it's difficult to, to tell your story, but now it, all of a sudden it's become really easy. You know, and, and so I know that what they're capable of, we've always known what they're capable of. Um, I don't know how we could be much faster. We probably need, we probably need to learn how to, do this thing more as a matter of every day rather than emergency. Exactly. So that's what I think is going to come of it. All these right. efficiencies and things shops are capable of, it's probably going to be revealing. And I can see manufacturing changing moving forward because of that. Mm -hmm. Truly. Am I right that you have a new website? Uh, you know, Todd Chua, Todd, which is, you work with him closely for many years is uh has been uh bothering me to put up a website for many years and you know, I, I resisted that um but when uh when we started on this project i i told them that uh, you know it's probably time that there's a website that people Welcome can go, to the world Bill. that people can go look look at our uh, information about our company so it's it's a it's a start obviously it's a work in progress but you know um you know, kudos to him. He didn't uh, start working on the website until uh, I called him in the middle of this uh, this project or whatever, and uh, and said, "Hey, you know, I probably I probably should have a website now." Mm -hmm. So That's I funny. guess I think I think it's www.ditech-gr.com. So there you go. A good shout out. Go. Anybody interested in checking out Ditech and connecting with them? I encourage people to visit that site. So Bill, thank you for your time and for, for some positive, uplifting news amidst all the negativity out there recently. Yeah, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. You know, you hear so much news, uh, so much news on 
television about why don't we have ventilators? Well, we don't have ventilators because there was no reason to stockpile hundreds of thousands of ventilators. Um, oh, it's going to take a year to ramp up production. Well, the news media doesn't understand what manufacturing can do. Um, you know, so, so, you know, people need to talk less and, and perhaps listen more and, uh, and, uh, maybe uh, maybe things will be a little bit better. I, I put a letter on the website, I sent that to you, I think yeah, the I'll, most- I incorporated it into our blog, so it's up there. The most important thing is that not as many of these ventilators will be needed if people will listen and stay at home, sheltered in place, so. Agreed. Again, thank you, Bill. So everyone out there for more coverage about anything mold making, anything in relation to the coronavirus and its impact on manufacturing, visit moldmakingtechnology.com. So all of you out there, stay safe and healthy.